Sitting upon a headland in a seaside coastal town in Yorkshire, Scarborough Castle dominates the skyline for miles around. Its history dates back from the Roman times and was even targeted in the First World War by the Germans. This spectacular structure has stood the test of time, defending the Yorkshire coast from invasion for thousands of years. Today we visit the incredible Scarborough Castle. The history of Scarborough Castle dates back thousands of years. Archaeological excavations in the 1920s found a Bronze Age sword dating back 3,000 years. In the 4th century, the Romans built a signal station upon the headland, warning enemy vessels it may be a good idea to turn around. In the Middle Ages, a castle was created upon the headland. In the 1190s, a monk wrote about the foundation of the castle and that it had a gate tower, a curtain wall, a dry moat and also a chapel. Much of the castle that is seen today was built by Henry II, with him building a strong, impregnable stone keep castle. The three-storey keep was built between 1159 and 1169. For centuries, the castle would become an important strategic position for the kings of England. In 1312, the castle was the scene of Piers Gaveston, Edward II's favourite noble's capture, of which he was then executed. The biggest legacy that was left upon Scarborough Castle was during the English Civil War in the 17th century. The castle was re-fortified during this time and then sieged in an extremely bloody standoff. Refusing to give in, defector Sir Hume Cholmley, who supported the king, stood firm for five months. Throughout this time, there would be barbaric and continuous fighting around the castle. The castle would be battered from the nearby St Mary's Church with a huge cannon that fired 65 pound cannonballs. This bombardment destroyed part of the keep, but the outer walls could not be breached. Bloody hand-to-hand -hand fighting came, but still, the gateway could not be breached. Finally, after a second siege, the castle was gained by the parliamentarians, however it kept changing hands between the royalists and Cromwell's troops. The castle was then used as a prison, housing prisoners who the king saw as a threat. Skipping ahead to 1914 and the First World War, Scarborough was battered by two German warships. This bombardment killed 19 people and damaged the castle's keep, barracks and curtain walls. It is estimated that 500 shells were fired towards the castle. This incident was then used by the British for propaganda purposes. It is here where our tour begins. Remember if you do enjoy our videos, to support the channel please subscribe. Upon climbing the extremely steep hill, you are greeted by the castle's barbican and gate. This was the main entry point of the castle and would need to be extremely strong in order to keep people out. This point would have been manned by guards all of the time to keep out invaders. A drawbridge would have been here too, which could have easily been pulled up if there was a need, isolating the castle, making it much harder to attack. The view from the castle is rather spectacular. Gazing out towards the North Sea, guards would have been urged to watch out for invasions from the Vikings across the sea. If an invasion force was to land on the bay below, one could easily warn the local settlement, and also the defenders would have the safety of the higher ground from the castle. The inner bailey would have been the heart of the castle. Within this grassed area would have been hustling and bustling with soldiers, blacksmiths and other people carrying out their daily duties. There is also a well in this area which would have been used to obtain water for the castle's keep, and this well is more than 150 feet deep. Also in this area would have been King John's Hall, this was a huge great hall which would have been used for entertainment and dining. An invitation into this room would have been available for esteemed guests of the king. Tapestries would have lined the walls with music playing long into the night. The inner bailey is also protected by a huge and thick curtain wall making sure its inhabitants are defended extremely well. The most famous and dominant part of Scarborough Castle is its incredible and colossal keep. Known as the Great Tower, it was built as mentioned earlier by Henry II. It acted as a message to the people to stay in line and emphasise the king's commanding power over the public. Inside the keep, you would have had the fore building, which would have received the guests of the castle's custodian. On the next floor, you would have a chamber, which was used for the royal household. Also on the first floor, you would find a chapel, a place of tranquility and peace, which the castle's inhabitants could pray and listen to church services at. On the second floor, there were two chambers. One of these was used as a public room, possibly where entertainment would take place. 
this first chamber would have been decorated to show off the financial might of the castle's owner. The second chamber on this floor would have been much more private. Upon the crenellations on the top of the Great Tower would have been more guards. These were tasked with spotting invasions and keeping the people inside the castle under control. Making our way around the castle, leaving the inner bailey, we make our way up to the viewing platform. From this platform, we can really see why Scarborough Castle was built exactly where it was. From this point, you can see for tens of miles around, easily being able to spot an advancing army from absolutely anywhere. From this high up, you also have a 360 degree of the land around, and also of the sea. King John's chamber block was built as a royal lodging. Construction began between 1210 and 1211, and was built alongside the hall. The rooms here could have been used for ceremonial use, and at times of great importance. This building would have been two-storey, and was described in 1361 as the Queen's Chambers. This name shows the opulence that must have been shown within these chambers' walls. A room fit enough for the Queen must have been kitted out with fireplaces for warmth, tapestries adorning the walls, and rich decoration. Also along this part of the castle are a number of different towers and turrets. These would have been circular and were used as guard houses. A walkway may have linked up the castle's towers, forming a wall walk for guards to patrol upon. The ruins of the King's Hall are the remains of the great public chamber where the royal household ate. It was set apart from the chamber block and the roof would have been supported with wooden posts. Inside this building would also have been a kitchen set apart from the hall to reduce the risk of damage should a fire break out. Today Scarborough is visited by most people who intend on having a great day out by the seaside. Its castle however has stood an incredible test of time. From civil war sieges to barrages by German first world war battleships, upon the headland standing above the town remains the intimidating, impregnable and magnificent structure of Scarborough Castle. As always, your support is greatly appreciated. To support the channel, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.